This is a monumental terracotta sarcophagus of an Etruscan woman. You see her reclining on the top and the figure is almost life-size. Now inside this sarcophagus was found her skeleton. This is in fact the most complete Etruscan skeleton in existence. And using the evidence of that and of the sarcophagus itself, we've been able to build up a, a really good picture of the woman who was buried in it, how the sarcophagus was made and burial practices at that time. The image represents a very wealthy Etruscan woman whose name we know because it's inscribed on the base of the chest. It reads from right to left as was normal with Etruscan writing. So we know from that that her names included Sianti, Hanunia and Telesnasa. We don't actually have her first name unfortunately so we don't know what her friends and her relations called her but we affectionately call her Sianti. So Sayanti is actually a family name and then we have Hanunia which was a clan name and then Telesnasa which means that she was married into the family of Telesna and both the Telesna and the Sianti families were well known in the area of Kiusi and they can be traced back over several centuries. Kiusi is a very important city or was a very important city in northern Etruria and it's about 130 kilometers north of Rome. This sarcophagus was found just about four kilometers outside of Chiusi in a small area called Poggio Cantorello. And unfortunately, the location of the tomb is now lost. In fact, there probably wasn't very much to see from the ground surface anyway, because it consisted of just a small chamber tomb which was reached by a passageway leading down from the ground surface. And that was closed off by a couple of pan tiles. Her tomb was actually cut out of the rock and there was a short passageway leading down into it. It's interesting that the actual tomb itself was quite small and in fact the sarcophagus which was at the back of that tomb was almost up to the height of the roof and the width of the sarcophagus just fitted into the chamber. So there was very little room to move around. And we can only conjecture as to how the sarcophagus was actually taken down into the tomb. It was made in sections um, as you can see, there's the chest, which is the largest part, and then there is a flat lid, which is made in two pieces, and then on top of that sits the figure, or lies the figure of Sayanti, which is also in two sections. And altogether, this weighs just under three quarters of a tonne. Inside the sarcophagus, there was just the skeleton, nothing else. And the only other items in the tomb were some silverware. Um, all that we have of this now, unfortunately, is a photograph because very sadly it disappeared at about the, the time of the last World War. But it was silverware, um, which doesn't seem to have been for everyday use, so it was made specially for the tomb. So it was symbolic, in a way. And at the time, when the tomb was opened, they were actually hanging on nails um, around the sarcophagus. So what was included was a mirror, which had a highly polished surface, so although it was quite thin, it, it could actually be used for a reflection. Um, there was a citula, which was a kind of bucket uh, in which maybe cosmetics could be kept. There were also two other small silver containers which have, would have been used for cosmetics. And in fact, if you look closely at Sandy, you'll see she's wearing her makeup. She, ha she has this white pigment on her face. And of course, it was fashionable then to look pale. And this contrasted strongly with the outdoor suntan appearance of the men. The sarcophagus is made of terracotta and it was quite a feat of manufacture because these are very heavy sections. It would be very difficult to fire without cracking. And the artist has managed to model it very carefully and some of the details he's reproduced are extremely lifelike. If you look at the folds in Sandy's elbow, they are just like real flesh and it does look as though he's had a real model for this part of the figure. What we've got here is possibly a real face that he's modelled on Sayanti, but he's possibly fixed it onto the body of a model that he used at the time, so he's got a real person posing in front of him. And in fact, we, can, we could tell by looking inside the sarcophagus that the face has been made like a kind of mask that has been fixed into the rest of the head. 
The whole of the sarcophagus was coloured originally and it was covered in a, a white pigment to make it look like marble. So in its pristine state it would have been a bright white colour and it's interesting to think what it would have been like in antiquity for anybody entering the tomb because you would go down this passage in the complete darkness maybe carrying a torch and there suddenly in front of you would be this gleaming white figure um, with the colour picked out in detail so she would have been very stunning. The sarcophagus was excavated in 1886 uh, by a local professional digger who was called Oreste Mignone and he passed it on to Wolfgang Helbig who was the secretary of the Archaeological Institute in Rome and he acquired this for the British Museum. It was actually bought by us the following year in 1887 for the princely sum included skeleton and everything for £495. <laughs>